Okay, we just finished with the empirical rule. Let's take a look at box and whiskers plots. You often are asked to identify or create a box and whisker plot. They're very easy to do. You've always got a uh, dot on the left, dot on the right. We've got our minimum and our maximum values of the data. That's simply the smallest data point, the largest. Then we've got our box. Our box, the left side of the box, is at the first quartile. The right side of the box uh, is at the third quartile. Remember, the first quartile is the same as the 25th percentile, and the third quartile is the same as the 75th percentile. The little hair in the middle is the median. It doesn't have to be right here in the middle of the box. It can be over here. It can be over here. It's, it's used when actually determining how your data is distributed. That mean you can tell how it is shaped by where the median is, where the quartiles are. The box and whiskers, the whiskers simply connect the box out to the min and max. Regression. You are probably going to have some type of regression equations or finding the regression equation based on a set of X and Y data on your uh, final exams. I, I can almost bet on that. I've got a couple of more uh, videos out there. I will put links to these at the bottom of the post so that you can go through those. But be able to find regression equations given a set of data. Be able to predict based on that data. What they often do is they'll say, find the regression equa equation and then predict for an X value of blank. You simply plug and chug into the regression equation you found. Also, there's multiple uh, regression type problems out there that you never can tell. If you've covered multiple regression in your class, you might have a multiple regression type problem. Understanding correlation, when we talk about the regression equation, uh, we need to understand the correlation. The correlation coefficient r is always between negative 1 and positive 1. And think about it this way, the stronger the correlation, it's getting closer either to the left, which would be norm negative correlation, or stronger to the right, which would be positive closer to the right, which would be positive correlation. If you have a correlation coefficient close to zero, it's almost no correlation. So perfect correlation here, straight line. And it's going up, so it's one. Here, it's pretty strong correlation there, very strong. An R value of 0.81. Here uh, is weak positive, a value of 0.45. This would be perfect negative, an R value of negative 1. This would be a very strong negative correlation, R value of negative 0.92 on this one. And this looks like somebody just took and threw some M&Ms into, into some Jello or threw them up in the wall. There's, there's no hardly any correlation at all right there. The R value is very close to 0 0.04. Also remember uh, that the coefficient of determination is r squared. Correlation coefficient is r. Correlation a coefficient is r, and if I square it, I get the coefficient of determination, r squared. It's literally the correlation coefficient squared. It, it tells you about the unexplained variation. Factorials, combinations, and permutations you can bet on having these types of problems too, or some kind of form of them. With factorials, I say just always have your calculator or Excel or some other technology ready to go. As an example, 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. But, you know, have your calculator, have Excel ready to do those. With Excel, you just type in equals F-A-C-T, open parentheses, and put whatever number you want to take the factorial of. With uh, combinations, combinations are the number of ways of something happening when order does not matter. All right, in your calculator, Excel, 
Excel does it easily. Most scientific calculators do it very easily. Like to check yourself, the combination 7C4 would be 35. Uh, permutations. Permutations are the number of ways of something happening. When the order does matter, note it as NPR. Uh, use your calculator, Excel, or other technology there on those two. Like 10P4 would be 5,040. When order matters, you're going to get a lot more in terms of if you are using the same numbers. Good example combination. I got 10 people. I'm going to give three $50 gift certificates. It's a combination because they're all getting the same prize. Order doesn't matter. Permutation 10 people, and from those, I'm going to pick three to get a million dollars, a thousand dollars, and a dollar. Three distinct prizes, so that would be a permutation. Here's some other examples using factorials. How many ways can I arrange five different books on a shelf? Five factorial, which is 120. How many ways can 13 first graders line up to go out the door? 13 factorial, I'm not sure what that is, put it in your calculator, it would be a big number. And then you'll get the problems with duplication or replication of identical members. In other words, they might say, how many distinct variations of the letters A, 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 B, B, C, D, D, D could you have? First count your total number of letters, that will be my numerator, 9 factorial. And then in my denominator, put parentheses around these now, it's 9 factorial, um, nine factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 1 factorial times 3 factorial. When putting these into a calculator, sometimes students forget that down here in the denominator, I'm multiplying these. This same question could have been asked this way. How many distinct ways could three red flags, two blue flags, one yellow flag, and three green flags be arranged on a flagpole? Nine flags, three red, two blue, one yellow, three green. Just, you know, I've seen these questions asked that way. I've seen I've got nine books on a, on a shelf, three identical math books, two identical um, psychology books, one history book, and three identical religion books. How, could, how many ways could I arrange those books? The key there is that you've got replication, so I've got to use this formula. Combinations and permutations. Here's a quick example of a combination. The number of ways to pick three committee members out of 11 people would be a combination because they do not note distinct positions. A permutation the number of ways to pick three committee members out of 11 people, where one would be the president, vice president, and treasurer. Uh, and w what I mean by that is one would be the president, one would be the vice president, one would be the treasurer. So not only could you be picked, you could be one of those three positions. So that would be a permutation. Probability, hopefully you are in statistics to learn a little bit about probability. And I'm betting that you'll have probability on your undergraduate statistics final. Probability is simply the number of desired events over the total number of events that can happen. Sound complicated? It's really not. What's the probability of rolling a five on a six-sided die? Well, there's only one five on a six-sided die unless you're playing with some kind of funky dice. So it'd be one out of six. What is the probability of picking an ace out of a shuffled deck of cards? There's four aces, 52 cards, 4 out of 52 simplifies to 1 13th. What about, what is the probability of picking a red ace? Well, there's two red aces, the red of hearts, I'm sorry, the ace of hearts, and the ace of diamonds, so it would be 2 out of 52, or 1 26. Or what if they said, what is the probability of picking the king of clubs out of a deck of cards? There's only one king of clubs, so it'd be 1 out of 52. All right, here's another one. What is the probability of picking an ace or a jack out of a shuffled deck of cards? There's four aces and four jacks, so that would be 8 out of 52, or the simplified form, 2 thirteenths. You may have to use the decimal form. You just divide 8 by 52 to get 0.154. What about the probability of flipping a coin and getting heads? It's one half. 
flip a coin, I either get heads or tails. And also, always remember, it just, it just really bothers me for a student to give me a probability that is not between 0 and 1, because it can't be. Probability values have to be between 0 and 1. Now, they can be between 0 and 100%, but, you know, that's still between 0 and 1. Probabilities cannot be negative. They cannot be greater than 1. Probability of zero simply means that it can't happen. The probability of me winning the lottery tonight is zero because I did not buy a ticket. So zero is can't happen. One, it's a sure thing. What about the probability of getting heads both times uh, if I flip a coin twice? This one always gets students at the first of a course. Hopefully at the end of the course they'll understand. The probability is one-fourth if I flip a coin twice. Think about it. I'm flipping a quarter and a dime. Sometimes that helps. Well, what's my probability of getting both heads? Well, four distinct things can happen. Those coins can either be heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. There's only one way out of those four to get both heads. So the probability would be one-fourth to get two heads in a row or to get Heads on one coin, heads on the other. Pivot tables. Oh my goodness, I think I'm going to wait till the next uh, video to go over pivot tables. But pivot tables, sometimes called contingency tables, are almost always a part of a final exam. And I'll go on to the next video now.